Hello and greetings. This workshop is on the principles of chaos magic. Can you make order out of chaos? So to begin with, um, this is probably where I call home in the world of magic. So what is chaos magic? Chaos Magic started in the 70s during uh, the growing magic scene of all the different various types of magic going on. Um, Pete Carroll and Ray Sharon are two of the well-known chaos magicians, not the only, but um, two that I uh, really uh, enjoy. Carroll's book, Labor Null, and Sherwin's Book of Results um, are two very influential books that cover a lot of um, foundational aspects of chaos magic. Chaos magic is practical magic, therefore theory and intellect cannot beat the actual experience. Um, this is the trademark of chaos magic, um, why Sherwin named his book the Book of Results. Um, you can study and read all the books you want, but you must implement uh, the wisdom because you have your own uh, personal experience and thus personal wisdom attached to it. So it concentrates on techniques and chaos magic is a system of systems and it focuses on which system creates the best results. So you may need to personally create a path that allows you to experiment and practice and go through the trials and errors so you find those best results. Um, a lot of uh, traditionalists don't really uh, like chaos magic because of its flexibility um, and uh, because of that it's hard to collectively keep chaos magic going as a whole and um, a lot believe that it's a dying art form in the magic community or you know it's one of the less popular but still pretty popular it's weird um, and I, I believe that it is more alive than ever and um, there just needs to be more stimulation from individuals in the chaos magic community like what I'm doing right now um, so is chaos magic for you um, chaos magic, you know, is just for people who are open-minded, free-spirited. They don't take things too seriously. Um, importantly, you can handle extreme changes in thought patterns. I, f I feel like that is what makes chaos magic really different, and it's not really for everyone. You have to actually be all right, um, you know, getting into things that you might not have ever thought you would get into or... Um, things that you know maybe society doesn't truly accept um, you know so there's a lot of different things um, and it's not all bad but there's just a lot of different ways that chaos magic can really um, alter your mind for the good and bad um, chaos magic is not for closed-minded individuals people who are always right or very opinionative um, people who are refusing to drop their current religion or belief system um, no one is forcing you to do anything, but, you know, eventually along your chaos uh, path, there will be um, deconditioning, there will be detachment, um, and people who are not open to trying different belief systems. No one's saying you have to try everything, but you will eventually have to try different things. Like, maybe you never thought you would get into the tarot, or maybe you never thought you'd get into astrology, or whatever, you know, maybe pagan systems or um you know light working or energy working you know so there's a lot of different things that you may try that may help you overall um accomplish your results and goals um but first i always like to remember these four things um i feel like they go through with every spiritual uh path uh nothing is true all is permitted energy is abundant Everything is connected and the path lies within you. So the first principle of chaos magic, avoiding dogmas. So a dogma is an official system or principle or tenet concerning faith, morals, behavior, etc. as of a church. So um, dogmas can come in many different forms, 
but regardless, non-attachment from dogmas allows the mind to flow free and away from subjective influence. And um, these strong holds in your mind to certain views restrict possible magical opportunities. Um, when performing magical operations, you need to have your mind and your subconscious as free as possible so you can be as successful as possible. And these dogmas, which you may feel that you're, you, you need to live that make you who you are, could actually be what is destroying you on your magical path. Um, so all these things um, that come from views and beliefs uh, that could be doubt, guilt, shame, morals, values, um, all these views, they all have an effect on your path. Um, an exception to this, which is interesting, in Chaos Magic, you will create temporary beliefs and um, switching from various practices and dogmas. Um, but you have the non-attachment ideology in mind, you know, so you might be a Christian, you know, you might undergo the Christian mindset for months, maybe even a year to attain certain results in um, your path. But you will eventually transition out of that and quickly be able to detach. And even when you're in the Christian mindset, um, there's still non-attachment. You know, you're not truly emotionally invested. And that is um, the exception. And that's, that's just an underlying uh, principle of uh, chaos magic, which is the ability to decondition and just be able to detach um, at any given moment. And uh, with avoiding dogmas, it's important to um, be wrong sometimes, you know, and be truly detached, you know, um, and that's the point. Number two, personal experience uh, is most important. Experience uh, the teachings for yourself. And uh, the more you do, the, the lessons solidify, you know, as you plug them in to your life. Um, Many teachers use a lot of regurgitated information. So you need to be creative and find new ways to spark up um, old information, old magical techniques. Um, every day is new, you know. Um, we're living the dream for a lot of uh, spiritual gurus who are not currently physically here. So um, a lot of people can get caught up into this regurgitated information because it sounds beautiful. It will always sound great, you know, but there's just a new face, you know, a new pretty face saying it. And um, we forget to be practical. And that is the issue. You know, anyone can speak about karma. Anyone can speak about souls recycling. But what are we going to do about it? Um, chaos magic is dying because a new generation is birthing and the path lies within you and uh, many people have just been on vacation so this is a time to truly get up and you know stop being so excited and entertained by information and start um doing something which leads to doing something is better than just doing no um than doing nothing you know so uh, a lot of magical operations and rituals and systems they may seem really complex but um the most important thing is you can always simplify whatever like take the most um complex banishing spell like honestly the easiest way to banish after a spell is just to laugh laughter is the greatest banishing spell and um that just shows how simple things can be you know it doesn't always have to be set in stone and um you know, magic is done when it's just, you know, simplified and just smile, have fun, enjoy it. And uh, yeah, move on. Uh, number three. Chaos magic is based upon uh, technical systems, you know, so that involves a lot of deep analysis, self-assessment, periodic reviews, you know, all this which you can keep in your journal. Um, some perceive chaos magic to be completely chill and free and relaxed but you know it's really the opposite um we want to focus on success we want to focus on positive results 
Um, so finding which system procedures works best, it takes a lot of analyzing. It takes a lot of um, insight. You know, we're not just you know, strolling through the park, you know, oh, Buddhism, oh, Hinduism, oh, Jainism, oh, uh, light working, wow, um, Wiccan, you know, like, wow, like, you know, witchcraft, like, shamanism, like, this is all just so entertaining, like, you know, you really want to, like, dive into these different systems with um, an analytical mind, you know, and from, like, from the start, and the longer you get onto transitioning between different systems, um, it's easier from the very beginning to instantly see the wisdom in a certain system. So um, strive to be the best at whatever operation or whatever procedure or system you may be in, and um, that will definitely improve your magical results. Number four, which is very important, um, deconditioning is necessary for progression on your spiritual path. Um, break apart from previous beliefs, self-identities, attitudes, views on politics, society, economy, etc. Um, this is very important. Uh, there's so many distractions uh, that make us lose focus from those positive results. So no more or as, as little as possible, and you can practice this um, day by day or whatever, just no more what am I and what am I not. Just experience things simply as they are. You know, that's a very um, general uh, Buddhist teaching right there. Just taking things simply as they are and not what you want them to be. Break apart from the consensual reality. Transition into the magical reality. Start getting out of your comfort zone. Uh, stop doing what everyone else does. Stop doing what's so conventional and convenient. You know, um, put yourself back in nature. Deconditioning allows simpler transitions and discarding from temporary beliefs along your chaos magical path. And the stronger your deconditioning skill gets, um, you can just instantly just switch in between um, belief systems or different types of thought patterns, different types of altered states of consciousness. Um, deconditioning really just loosens up this uh, consensus reality. Number five, um, creative approaches. Uh, traditional magicians and spiritual practitioners want to stick to just one belief system or path. You know, Wiccans are Wiccans, Zen Buddhists or Zen Buddhists, um, etc. But chaos magic blossoms when um, there are dynamic and creative processes. There are innumerable amount of sources to work from, which is what makes chaos magic so wonderful. Any magical system, belief system, spiritual practice or path, religions, cults, metapsychology, television shows, movies, anything can be a source to work from. If you understand how uh, how these constructs can form in our mind and uh, we could use them to uh, benefit from. Just like with televisions and um, movie characters, you can use, you know, um, certain characters just as uh, evocations or invocations. You can do so much with anything. You know, you can do so much with anything. And that's why there's just an innumerable amount of sources to work from and be creative from. You don't have to have a how-to booklet on how to um, call this spirit or whatever. But just make sure to stay on task while switching through systems because um, it's very possible to be so invested and entertained and in love with a certain system that you may forget that you're even a chaos magician. Okay, uh, number six. Number six, we have Gnosis. With every uh, magical operation. An altered state of mind is necessary. 
This state of mind must be triggered at your command. And this state is called gnosis. Gnosis is the main ingredient of a magical operation. Austin Osman Spare described it as vacuity, lack of thought or intelligence. I like to describe this as uh, the void, um, free of the mental dialogue, your um, conscious mind as much as possible, the background chatter, you know, the songs playing in your head, you know, free of all of that. That is gnosis. That is vacuity. That is the, the state that you want to maintain. Because this state is what uh, harbors and uh, nurtures your subconscious mind when you're doing such magical operations. So this state of mind allows no interruption while performing your tasks and opens your subconscious mind. Phil Hine, another great chaos magician, uh, states two types of physiological gnosis. You have the inhibitory or passive states which can be attained uh, through meditation, yoga, scrying, which is through black mirror, divination, thought or, sensorous, uh, thought or sensory deprivation, such as float tanks, or the excitatory or active states, which is sexual, emotional arousal uh, experiences, dancing, drumming, chanting, etc. And uh, these two different types of states are all based on your personal preference. Um, I've heard that, you know, the sexual um, arousal is probably the strongest form of gnosis um, because of the energies created during that. But anything really is, um, is best. I, I think that whatever uses the least amount of energy and you can be consistent as possible, such as meditation and yoga or the black mirror, those are um, very healthy and cheap and sustainable ways to create gnosis. So maintaining the state of gnosis, this void, this vacuity, it takes uh, time. It's a skill, so practice it often, anytime, anywhere. Like if you're just sitting, waiting for a bus, uh, sitting on a bench somewhere, or just killing some time, it's a great time to just practice just having just that void state of mind. Um, there are many ways to attain the state, so find the, the safest option and the most beneficial ways. Um, like I said, meditation and yoga are very chill ways. And um, whenever you're in the state of gnosis and you want to break it, laughter is probably the easiest and best uh, banishing spell. And another uh, simple harmless method to attain gnosis is to concentrate on the breath coming in and out of your nostrils until you can feel the hairs moving. And holding focus onto this uh, can bring you into a slight trance and kind of um, be a good way to get gnosis really quick if you need to maybe fire a sigil really quickly. Um, and here are some more methods of gnosis. If you want to pause this slide, um, there are definitely a lot of ways and you can get really creative. And in conclusion, uh, these are general uh, principles, but, you know, important principles to keep in mind. Um, remember to please be creative along your path. If you find that a, a particular system, um, such as Nordic runes, uh, you find Iceland to be kind of boring, uh, then s switch it out. Uh, change it. You can do whatever you want. Metamorphosis is very um, beautiful and it's a very important skill to have. Uh, some of these skills such as uh, or some of these principles such as deconditioning may take months or years to complete but be patient. Um, chaos magic is about successful results but you also need to have fun while getting there and remember to laugh and it's a learning process. Chaos magic uh, needs as many creative minds as possible to keep the system alive and burning. And um, I hope to uh, put out some interesting chaos magic uh, tips and tools that I've created along my path. However, uh, these are the six principles of chaos magic and a little introduction and some analysis um, to these principles of chaos magic um, 
And yes, I hope you enjoyed and I'll post uh, some links to some further information on uh, these principles. Hope you enjoyed. Peace.